I'm Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. Main Street businessmen and we the farmers can no longer allow ourselves in rural America to be divided. We have too many things in common. Our families, schools, churches, our entire community's future, yes, even its standard of living. Rural America is dependent on our willingness to unite in order to strengthen our businesses, whether it be you, the merchant, or we, the farmers. Of course, farm income is the key to rural prosperity because it eventually passes through your cash register on Main Street. This strengthens every segment of rural America. Increasing farm income to cost production plus a reasonable profit is the goal of National Farmers Organization. Because of the present economic condition, many businessmen such as yourself has asked what they could do to help increase cash flow. In order to expand bargaining programs and our forward contracting concept more rapidly in your community, it takes more personnel meeting with more farmers explaining the alternatives we offer in marketing, which are designed to increase your income as well as the farmers. You can help by purchasing a $75 certificate of support. I want to congratulate you. It's a wise business decision. Invest intentionally initiated by the bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. Here's the way the story goes. I was seated one day with a group of oil company officials, and I heard one of them remark that, that beginning 1980, every electric bill and every natural gas bill of every consumer in America would start rising. And I said, sir, how do you know that? His reply was, Chaplain, do you know how much natural gas we have on the North Slope of Alaska? I said, how much? He said, enough to supply the entire United States of America for over 200 years if every other natural gas well in America were cut off tomorrow morning. Well, I said, surely you're going to get that natural gas to the consumer. His reply, Chaplain, we have two methods of getting it there. I said, what are they? He said, number one, we can build a natural gas pipeline across Alaska, only 800 miles, all American soil, down the same corridor as a crude oil pipeline, not disturbing the ecology in any manner. And he said, Chaplain, within six months to one year of the completion of the crude oil pipeline in 1977, we can flood every western state in the United States of America with cheap American natural gas, and the price of electric bills and home heating bills can start going down beginning 1980. Well, I said, what's the alternative to that? A natural gas pipeline across Alaska. He said, a natural gas pipeline across Canada over 3,000 miles on foreign soil where there is no corridor cut out of the wilderness, disturbing the ecology. And he said, Chaplain, it would be at the exorbitant price of over $40 billion. Well, I said, surely you aren't going to do that. His reply, Chaplain, mark my words. Whoever is president of the United States of America in 1977 will make the decision that the natural gas pipeline must go across Canada. It cannot be built across Alaska. You'll remember that in 1977, Mr. Carter made the decision that the natural gas pipeline had to be built across Canada. It could not be built across Alaska by American private enterprise. I went back to the oil company official afterwards, and I said, sir, why in this world did that man ever make that decision? His reply, Chaplain, the decision was made intentionally in order to keep the American people from ever getting the natural gas from the North Slope of Alaska in order to control the economy and the people of the United States of America. By the way, Dr. Weber, just in passing, in 1976, when that statement was made to me by this executive on the oil field as to the president's decision in 1977, Mr. Carter had never been elected yet. My question oftentimes at this point is, who is the unseen government that regardless of whether we have Democratic or Republican administration, we get the identical same decisions out of Washington, D.C.? And this oil company official said, Chaplain, it was done intentionally. Well, as a result, seven years have gone by. Not one single cubic foot of natural gas has ever been delivered to the American people from the North Slope. Not one link of pipe has ever been laid yet. Every 24 hours at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, 190 million cubic feet of natural gas are being pumped back into the ground and not allowed to come to the American public 
by order of the President of the United States of America in 1977, your electric bill started going up by a designed, pre-planned plan. And all of that natural gas that's coming out with the oil is being pumped right back into the ground rather than piped down to the states of our nation. That is correct. Intentionally done in order to help control the economy and the people of the United States of America. Well, that's an amazing and almost unbelievable story. And yet, I have the documentation right here in my hands. Well, to add to that briefly, across America as I've traveled and given this presentation many times on energy, I dare to say that there are dozens of individuals who have written congressmen asking, Congressman, would you please reply as to whether what Lindsey Williams says about why my electric bill is going up, would you please reply as to whether you agree with that? And would you believe that of all of the dozens of letters that have ever been written, not one single congressman has ever been willing to address that issue back to one of his constituents? Now, they address other issues in my book, but they almost evade that as if it were the plague. They do not want to admit to the American people what they did to us. So the subject of the non-energy crisis is a real hot potato. Well, it's so hot that uh, Mr. Jesse Helm, congressman from North Carolina, his office called me up on the phone a while back and said, Chaplain Williams, we have a copy of your book. Well, I said, that's interesting. Do you believe it? They said, yes. I said, well, would you help me start a congressional investigation? Here are the exact words that were said to me over the phone. They said, Chaplain, the American people have been misled for nine years. If we started a congressional investigation into that issue now, we would be booed out of Washington. It is one of the hottest issues in Washington, D.C., even yet. Well, I can readily see that it is a very hot issue and a, a devious question. So we trust that from hearing these special programs, everyone will want to read your book, recently updated and enlarged, The Energy Non-Crisis. Thank you, Chaplain Williams, for taking time from your busy schedule to appear with me on this two-part dialogue talking about tremendously interesting subject of the non-energy crisis. This is one of our featured gift books of the month. It is available for your gift of $10 and upon request. Three copies for a $25 contribution for radio time. Our mailing address, the Southwest Radio Church, Post Office Box 1144, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, zip code 73101. John, give us further details, please. Thank you, Dr. Weber. Friends, you can also place your order by using our toll-free Watts line number for use anywhere in the United States except in Oklahoma. Simply dial 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. And again, the book is called The Energy Non-Crisis by Lindsay Williams. Yours for a gift of $12 or more to this ministry. Three copies for a $25 offering. You can also get the two-part interview with Dr. David Weber and author Lindsay Williams on cassette for your $6 gift upon request. Our address again is the Southwest Radio Church, Post Office Box 1144, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73101 or call toll-free 1-800-652-1144. And just before we leave you, this program note, join us all next week for highlights.